Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick update on how I'm getting on with this Dove from Vulcan Innovations. Now I did a video a while ago uh, showing you what this thing looks like and I've been busy ever since kind of putting all the pieces inside. So now as it sits here this has a 3S Lithium ion battery pack, it has walk snail in the nose and it has a flight controller and GPS and all the stuff that you'd expect full iNav setup. Now, I haven't had a chance to maiden it yet because the weather has been so horrific here in the UK. It's standard kind of, you know, autumn, early winter weather. So it's either raining or it's blowing a gale or it's doing both. And because of the short days, you have to kind of pick your time. But I thought it would be interesting to show you how everything has gone in here because I have made a few adaptations. Uh, some of it is stuff that's already been dealt with by the manufacturer. See that first video where I talk about that. So things like the tunnel between the GPS and the flight controller bay, for example, that I've cut into this one will be supplied as is. The overall ready to fly weight of this is 619 grams with the battery. So it isn't particularly heavy. You know, reasonably chunky, but it isn't crazy heavy because these are really, really big wings. So I'm excited to see how this flies. The pieces used in here, if you're interested, are the Matek F405 WMN. It's my go-to choice when the space is tight and I need all of the UART to control things like the on-screen display for my walk snail and potentially get telemetry back too. I've also got a Matek GPS unit under the GPS hood. Don't worry, I'll show you a close-up how everything's gone in in a moment. I then have the Radio Master R161. I still had one of those knocking around. Fantastic little receiver. The best receiver FreeSky never made and probably one of the reasons why all of that litigation happened between those two. Uh, that's here in the back. So the two antennas are sticking out here at the front for radio control. Uh, I want to use this with my old Tyrannus radio. Just way I want to build this particular one. Uh, in the nose there is a walk snail V1 unit with the two antennas so that's what those things are at the front again arranged in that kind of V configuration so as it banks and rolls one of the antennas is always coming into line with the goggles. Uh, there were a couple of extra things I 3D printed a mount for that I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a moment and I also used a little bit of Yoohoo pore glue which is my favorite glue for these kind of planes. If you are using other stuff and hot glue and things like that, and you can afford to give it a day to go off, uh, you who pour is my favorite glue outside of really good hot glue sticks. So there are a couple of things that I've done before I put the electronics in that I talked about in the first one. Uh, first of all, I exercised all of the control surfaces. I popped them off from the control surfaces. I just took the um, servo control rods off and exercised and compressed the hinges a little bit to make them easier to move. All of them were stiff and they should be a little bit easier to move than that. They've all had that done. Um, I did lower the battery plate. I will show you that in a minute. The battery plate as it comes is very high. Uh, it means that you're sacrificing an awful lot of room in the nose that you can get big batteries into. Uh, this is easily able to do 3S lithium ion. Now I've moved that battery plate or a nice chunky 4S battery. Uh, I have cut that tunnel from the flight controller position into the GPS. Again, I'll show you that in a mo. I've added a couple of uh, pieces of insulation tape uh, underneath the prop. The prop before, if you remember, was coming too far forward. I've put a couple of bits of insulation tape right at the root of these blades, just so that they can't come forward and potentially hit the back of the wing. And I've also added a couple of pieces of uh, P600 wet and dry paper in the places that I hold it to throw it right under the CG point. So as I hold it and it balances beautiful on the CG position with all the electronics in, uh, even if the model is slightly wet because I've already flown the thing and it's landed in wet grass, I can still get a good throw and I'm not going to get my hands anywhere near that prop at the back. My process for a new model like this is to spend a little bit of time with the diagrams on the flight controller manual website, the Matek one in this case, and then sit down and just do a little bit of a drawing. It could be on an A4 piece of paper. I personally like PowerPoint and I create something like this. This shows me exactly how everything is laid out and how it's all put together, where all the wires are going to go and where I can, I try and use the right color of the wires so that when I put it all together, it's going to make a lot of sense. 
In terms of the actual setup, it's exactly the same as INAV for Beginners 2023 series. So I calibrated and performed the basic setup with a flight controller before I installed anything onto it or did any soldering, just to make sure the flight controller is okay. They don't usually like having flight controllers returned as faulty when they're covered in lots of solder. Then once I did that, I soldered the pins where they needed to go and I knew where they needed to go because of the plan and the layout that we'd already done. And then I made off all the connectors for the receiver, GPS power and connected it all up and then tested everything in the model before finally using double-sided foam tape to put everything into place. So here's the body all put together. So let me show you a little bit closer up, as I said, how the electronics have gone in. There's been a number of adaptations that I've done on this. Again, this model that I've got here is, I would probably consider it pre-production as they have tweaked a couple of things in the final version. So let's start at the back in the bay for the flight controller. These magnets are really, really tough. Um, so in here, what we have is we have the F405 WMN. I have pinned it so that the pins can um, mean that this can be moved around to other models nice and easily. Uh, as I've covered, I kind of do all of the wiring in something like PowerPoint. I just kind of draw it all out. It means that when I come to put it together, it's just then a case of trying to keep everything neat. As you can see, it is a little bit tight for space in here. There is the connection that goes to the ESC. We have the power wires, power wires coming in at the bottom. This here is an R161. That is one of the best FreeSky receivers they never made. That's a Radio Master unit. I think that's one of the reasons that they got sued because this actually has smart port on it, which means that I can get telemetry back to the radio so I can get all that wonderful INAV goodness and it just all fits in. The only thing I haven't connected is this little board here. This is the one with the buzzer and also has the USB connector on it. That kind of tucks away in this side. And the reason I have it like that, it's just easier for me to pull it out. There's no easy way for me to kind of mount it in here and get the top on easily. It's just doesn't quite work. So what I've done is I've just left it slightly loose and that kind of fits in there. But as you can see, there's only just enough room in here for all of the electronics. It is a very tight fit. So I would recommend if you're doing this, have a think about making sure that you have enough room. The only way I got everything to fit in was to actually put the flight controller kind of towards this side of the model and right against the front book head. Uh, the GPS runs out of the back of the flight controller underneath this cover. Uh, you can probably just about make it out under there. Again, I cut a channel in the top. Uh, you can probably just make out there are a couple of cuts in the foam there. So I cut out a wedge and then I cut the bottom of that wedge to make a channel, glued the top back on and ran the cables through. We have the antennas from the receiver stuck out at that kind of 90 degree style angle. And that's all the flight control stuff at the back. It gets a little bit more complicated when we get up to the front. So I've done a number of things in here to get everything to fit okay. So first and foremost, you'll notice that the battery tray is now at the bottom. This is the battery tray that came with it. Initially, it was installed at this height here. So it only gave you about 28, 30 centimeters maximum of depth. Um, what I did is I took it out and I've glued it to the bottom uh, using Yoohoo pore glue. That gives me an incredibly deep pocket for the battery. I also then did make sure that here at the bottom of the seam, the seam uh, wasn't glued super, super well. So I Yoohoo poured it in there. So that's a nice solid mount. It does have a little strap that uh, will keep the battery in there nice and safe, stop it moving around. This isn't going to be flown like I stole it. The couple of cables that come up from the back, we have this cable here. This cable is the data cable, transmit and receive pins that go into the walk snow unit. Don't worry, we'll get to that in a moment. That is what provided me with my on-screen display. And on the other side, we have the power cable. That's gonna give me battery voltage and ground that's there to absolutely provide 
the power for the warp snow unit. And that means that I can power everything, we can wait for the GPS to lock, and then when it's locked, the final thing I do is plug the power in here, and then the warp snow unit is live and we're ready to throw it. So let's get on to the warp snow unit. How have I put that in here? Well, I'm using one of these um, kind of version one. I have had a couple of these left over. So I've put it in this position. So I 3D printed a mount for it, a plastic mount, which has been glued into position. That is then, the unit is actually screwed onto that. I actually put the bolts on the bottom of that 3D printed unit by uh, heating them up and pushing them in with a soldering iron. And then the cable comes out to the camera at the front. And the camera is one of the mini cameras here. Hopefully you can see that. That fitted absolutely beautifully into position and the it's recessed so it flies into anything. The camera isn't going to take the brunt of it and it does mean there's lots and lots of airflow to go in the front and or then exhaust here but that means that i can actually get with this adaptation a nice chunky 3s lithium ion battery in here and it gives me about right central gravity if i grab the scales there we go. It's about 171 grams. So that means that this 171 gram battery, um, because it's lithium ion, it's pretty chunky little bear. It fits in here beautifully. So let me just show you that. So with that battery in position, let's put the strap over the top. There we go. That means that it can be plugged in at the back like that and then I have enough room here to get to and connect the warp snow unit onto that little connector and the battery hatch goes on nicely. So that's how everything has gone together. It's been a little bit of a fight uh, but the adaptation of dropping the battery bay down here has really helped and that also gives me tons of room around everything and because there are kind of the, the lots of holes and airflow around it I'm pretty confident this is going to stay nice and cool. So let's have a very, very quick look in iNav of how I've got this set up. Uh, everything is nice and green over here on the right hand side. So we know the pre-arming checks is done and it does arm. I've tested that on the bench. We have the GPS all working, Barrow is set up, gyro electrometer, accelerometers, can't even say it. Uh, actually all tickety boot too. Uh, so I went and did the calibration. Again, every step that I've gone through to set this up is exactly the same as the INAV for Beginners 2023 series. So go and check that out. Mixer is set up for a standard plane with a traditional tail. So we've got um, stabilized pitch, roll and yaw for those. And the motor is on S1. So that's how the mapping is done. So that's easy to plug it all together. Outputs are enabled. I kept the protocol as standard for the ESC, which means I have had to do a quick calibration. It wasn't too tricky. Keeping the servo refresh rate down at 50 hertz and stop uh, the motors on low throttle. Ports, a couple of interesting things in here. I, uh, UART2 is set for the receiver by default. MSP display port is set for UART3, which is those two wires that goes to the front for the walk snail system. And the only other thing that's set here really is the GPS on UART4. And then down here, I enabled soft serial in the configuration tab. We'll look at it in a moment. That is there just so I can have smart port to that receiver. Obviously, if you're using something like CRSF, you wouldn't use that at all. Configuration, nothing's really changed in here. This is pretty standard stuff. Only a couple of things that I've done. I have enabled GPS for navigation and telemetry. I have enabled CPU-based serial port so I can have smart port. But if you're using something like Express LRS for CRSF, you're not going to need that. Permanently enable launch mode, which I really like, and continuously trim fixed wing servos is set on two. Failsafe is set to return to home. Of course it is. Why would you do anything else? Pit tuning I'm leaving as default for the initial flight. Nothing in there. Receiver is set to S bus. Um, it was set by CRSF by default. I've also made sure that all the middle channel positions are exactly 1500. Modes, I've set it up as I like to. So for example, my channel six, which is my arming channel, actually has uh, just 
the low position is disarmed, middle and high positions armed. And then we have horizon, manual and acro mode. And we also have return to home as an Odeer switch. And then the only other things I have, auto tune and auto level as well. I should really add the beeper back in here before I fly. OSD tab looks like this. So I've got it set for avatar. Um, that's the MSP display port stuff I'm using here, obviously with Walksnail. Organize my layout as I like and saved all that. Made sure my units are imperial because obviously I'm a miles per hour kind of height in feet kind of guy. And that's kind of it really. Everything else has gone spectacularly well. All of the throws by default, nothing has been really changed in terms of the outputs. I haven't really changed the throws. The default midpoints for 1500 on this model that I've received here, all the flight control surfaces are exactly aligned and the min and max of 2000 with rates of 100 have given me exactly the right kind of throws that I'd want for a maiden flight. So I haven't had to change any of the geometry or any of the other stuff. So the setup for this has been incredibly straightforward and wasn't particularly tricky. So that's how it's all gone together uh, with a little bit of work. It's easily, even though the body is relatively slim, it's taken all the electronics without too much trouble with those couple of adaptations that I've done. So all I need now is a dry day when it isn't blowing a gale and I can get out there, hopefully with a buddy of mine who can wear the hat cam, be my spotter and get some footage of it flying. So stay tuned, I will get the maiden up as soon as I can. Uh, it's that wonderful time of year when we have to wait for the weather to break. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.